Okay, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to draw figure 4-1-E angle bracket. And what this lesson is going to introduce is uh, a different unit. We're going to draw this in the metric system using millimeters. As you can see here, we have uh, 48, 10. Uh, they're all whole integers. And we also have some angles here as well. 45. Uh, we have another 45 here. Um, as for the rest, there's a, a, a need for an annotation. We're going to specify what type of material this is. As you can tell, what is considered to be the front view. Um, and other than that, like I said, we're introducing the metric system. Whenever you see large numbers such as this, especially in, in quantity, such as multiples of tens, and it's a small part. Most likely those are millimeters, and it's a metric system. But you would normally look to see it annotated somewhere. So with that being said, let's move forward and draw this model. Once again, this lesson is not just intended to show you how to draw this model, but also to teach various things, so be sure to pay attention to the content that I provide verbally. Let's start. Start with a new file. So file new. Remember this is a single part. We're going to be moving into assemblies very shortly. And you're going to say OK. We're still choosing ANSI A landscape for drawings when we get down there. But at the bottom right hand corner you're going to switch and you're going to change this to MMGS for millimeters, grams, and seconds. OK. At this point we are going to create our first part of our model and that is considered the base. So I'm going to look at this model and I'm going to say okay what do I want to do? I could create the the uh, individual bottom rectangle and then create a top rectangle on top of this um, and then shoot these up and then the, notice this area here is higher than this area so I'd have to add a little extra material and so forth. Or, I can draw one big brick that happens to be 96 by this combined dimension by 50 and then cut away material. Um, I'm going to attempt to do it that way and you're going to find as you start to become more experienced that there's more than one way to do things. Sometimes you attempt method A you end up causing more work for yourself, so then you attempt method B. So let's start with creating the most material we're ever going to need and then subtracting material by doing extrude cuts since we're familiar with that operation. All right, so extrude boss base. We're going to do the top plane again, looking straight down at the top. I'm going to draw a rectangle. Make sure I'm snapping to the origin, upper right hand corner. Remember, we're in MMGS now. Everything should be in millimeters. I'm going to make this 96 millimeters. The combined dimensions that I was mentioning is 36 plus 6. I'm sure you know that. I just want to show you that it adds up just using a formula line. So we have 42 by 96. And I want you to also see where I got that number. And I've Caught myself. 36 plus 6 is 42. And we could keep moving on, but if you take a look where this dimension line is calling you and leading you to this edge, that's why it's also called the dimension line and then there's your leader line. It's leading us to this edge of the shoulder of the part, and the 36 leads us to here. So we forgot this additional 6. Alright, so 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 plus 36. 48. And lo and behold, right here, it says 48. So that's why they didn't tell us this. So we know this is 6, we know this is 6, we know this is 36, and they all add up to 48, and it was not necessary. Because 36 plus 6 is 42. 48 minus 42 is 6. Hopefully you're starting to see the point here. Let's double click this, change this to 48. Press enter, 
and confirm by clicking the blue arrow on your computer or the purple on mine. We're going to go up, I told you, the combined 50, as you can see here. So we're going to put 50, press enter for the preview, and press enter again to confirm. Okay, there's no more material we need, so we are no longer going to need to use this extrude boss base feature. So at this time, we're going to do the bottom cut with the single sketch. There's two areas here, but we're going to use one sketch to cut both. It's an extrude cut operation. We're going to click this side. We're going to hit spacebar and square it up with the right side. We're going to snap to the bottom corners of this rectangle with the two corner rectangle tool. And then we're going to smart dimension them. We know they're 6 wide and they're 10 tall. Same as here. This is consistent. This projects straight across. So we're going to make it 6 wide, 10 tall with smart dimension. 6, 6, 10, 10. Since this is a through all cut, all the way through the part, we can't add any other sketch geometry for other parts of this. We're going to confirm. You can push your wheel mouse in and drag so you can kind of see this happening in 3D. 3D. Rather than putting in a blind number here, we're going to just change it to through all. Say OK. The bottom part of our model is completed. Space. Let's view this as an isometric and regroup and take a look. What do we want to do next? I like, I'd like to cut this notch out and I'm trying to figure out what it is that I need to do. I know this is 24 down from the top. I can get there from the bottom up. 50, so the top of my part, I can go down 16 to get to here. Then I can show you how to cut our 45 degree after that. And it happens to be 24. Let's do this 16 and that 16. Let's do the outside. And I lied. We actually are going to do an extrude boss operation, just not this minute. Um, so let's cut this away. Okay, so it happens to be 16 wide, and from the bottom up, it's 26. So the missing number we need is 50 minus 26. Okay, you might already know that number in your head. So let's do that. So we're going to do some cuts on this face. So we're going to do extrude cut, click this face, hit spacebar and square it up with the front. Okay, and at this point, same scenario as before, we're going to draw two rectangles in the corners. Snapping, of course, we want to at least anchor one corner of our rectangle to the model. And then at that point, we're going to put in that 50 minus 26. Some of you probably already knew this is 24. And of course, the 16. So it's 16 by 24. So 16. Click, click, 24. We're going to cut this straight through. I know that we need this angled 45 degree uh, piece of material in the middle. We're going to add that last. So we'll bump out. And like I said, there's more than one way to do this. We could kind of cut half of this away, go to the other side, cut the other half, and leave what's remaining. Um, once again, this is just the method that I'm adopting to give you the experience. So say OK. And now our shoulders are cut out. We're missing the angled part. Like I said, we'll add that last. I know that it's 19 down, it's 10 wide, and from that point it's 45 up to this surface. So geometrically we have every bit of information we need. But like I said, I'm not going to focus on that this moment. What we are going to focus on is this middle piece. Okay. That happens to be, once again, as I said, we're going to look around. It's 24 wide. 
okay? And it's 16 down from the top, 20 over from the edge that we just made. So I wouldn't be able to do this easily without having this corner or that edge being created by this cut. I do not want to fill it. Not sure how that happened. Okay. So once again, extrude cut, click this surface, which is the front. We're going to press space, we're going to square it up at the front again. And we're going to draw a rectangle, just snap to the top edge, not to the corner, but to the edge. If it's on the corner, you won't be able to move it. We need to position this. First things we're going to do is we're going to go 16 down from the top. So 16. And of course, we're going to specify how wide it is. That is 24. Just to show you where we're at, I went 16 down, I went 24 over, and I have this rectangle just floating in space. It's not in the right position. It needs to be 20 over from the side. Either side, to be honest, this is a symmetric part. So we're going to go this line to this edge, and we're going to specify 20. Hit press enter, and now we're right in the middle. We could draw the 45 in from this part now, or we can cut it later. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I want to proceed, so let's just to keep it simple without making this more complex, let's just break this out into small simple steps. Let's switch to through all, because this is going through the part. And now you can start to see the, the majority of the shape is done. We need to cut the 45s. We need to put the 45s in on both sides. It's not showing it here, but it is a symmetrical part, and it is there. It should show dotted hidden lines that it's there. But this is from a textbook that may be explaining something different than what I'm using this image for. Okay. Notice we have two different heights. We have this height up here, and this one's a little lower, just like our model. Okay. Let's do the 45-degree cut. You can tell here the top flat part that is supposed to be remaining is 10 wide from this edge. We have this edge, we just need to go 10 over. And then from that point, it's going to go down 45 degrees and cut off whatever's on the other side of that line. So once again, extrude cut this surface, square it up the front. We're going to cut this corner off. So. Let's draw a triangle. With this standard pencil, single line tool, we're going to click this edge. Don't snap to the middle. If you snap to the middle, you'll never get it off. It might need to be in the middle, but we're going to leave this the way it is because if you snap there, it will never come off that. You can't dimension it into a different position. If you want it snapped to the middle, then do it. It won't move. For this opportunity and this example, we're not. So right above it, just the edge, snapping to the edge, not the center, click. I'm just going to click to the edge, not the center, somewhere here. Okay, I have a line that I can use to apply the measures, measurements that I actually have in mind, the 10 and the 45. So we're going to smart dimension the point of this line to the edge of this part. We're going to specify 10 millimeters. And now I need the angle. Now this is new, this is the new part. We're going to click the top edge of the part and the angled line, the sloped line. And the only thing that SolidWorks can do at this point with those two things selected is to provide an angle measurement where we specify 45. You can do the exact same thing. You can move this dimension in a little bit if you'd like, just to get it out of the way. We're going to do the exact same thing over here. So repeat, and this is a good opportunity to practice what you've learned. Like I said, it doesn't matter where you put this dimension. I just like to put it somewhere where I can easily read it later. Okay, there's our 10, there's our 45. We can't just leave and expect the cut to happen. We have created a single line, and a single line is not understandable by SolidWorks. 
you and I as humans understand we don't want this part, but SolidWorks has no way of understanding that. You need to complete the shape. So we're going to snap to one side of the line, snap to the corner, and then continue on to the other edge of the line. And now you have a completed triangle. This is an enclosed, complete shape, just like a cutting tool should be. So we're going to do the same thing here. Press escape when you're done. And now we have two shapes that are exactly the same size. We're going to confirm. And of course, you can rotate this to see this happening. Change this to through all and say OK. Take a look at our model. As you can see, it's starting to take shape. And we have basically one more thing to do on both sides. We're going to attempt to do that. based off of several sketches. The part, the difficult part is this is stuck in the middle. So we can make this entire triangular shape that happens to be 29 long and then cut 19 of it away. We can cut the whole, do the whole thing and then go from both sides and cut 19 away. So there's more than one way to do this. So we're going to do an extrude boss base on this surface, we're going to square it up, and we're going to draw that triangle. So it goes from here to somewhere on the part. So just click on the edge, not the center. Smart dimension, the two lines that provide the angle. Put in the number, 45. Complete the shape. Do it on the other side. So somewhere on the edge to the corner. Make sure you snap to it. You can complete the shape now if you want. It doesn't matter specifically what order you do this in. Before you leave, of course, the only measurement we need is the angle. Okay, so we have, if I rotate, we have this like wireframe sketch that's just kind of on the front plane, and we're going to extrude this direction. 19 plus 10. 29 inches, or 29 millimeters, I'm sorry. Then we're going to take away 19 of that 29 with an extrude cut. Okay, so let's uh, confirm. And we're going the other direction. We don't want to do that. This is the first time we've experienced this. To flip the other direction, you just click this button right here. And it goes that way. Okay? So if it ever ends up going the wrong direction, you just click that button. We're doing 29 millimeters, pressing enter. We have the material. We need to cut a portion of that away. Okay, so when we do that, we have a sketch that we can use. Let's see how this goes. I may have to redo and undo this, but this is part of the uh, creating a model blind. We're going to hit extrude cut on this surface, square it up. I would like to reference sketch 6. I don't know if I can. So I can't reference any of this. So how do I know how wide my triangle is? If I just put my mouse on this edge and then just move it downwards, you can see the dotted line. And then if I touch this edge, this point and move it over, it starts to create a blue dot. Blue dot. When you do that after have touched both angled lines and you bring them, you can actually start to see an intersection point. This is the intersection. I, can, I don't have to be pixel perfect either. I can be anywhere in this range. As long as you see the horizontal and vertical, when you click, you have a length. Okay, and that is 16. So let's just make sure it is. 16. And then snap, snap, and you need to complete the shape, snap. For those of you that know your angles, you would probably assume and know that that is 16. 16, 16 will make a 45. So let's do that again. 
I'm going to go out longer than 16, just to show I can smart dimension it. Now that I have the number, 16, and the vertical line, 16. Once again, don't forget that line. We need to complete the shape. Confirm with the purple. Now we don't want to cut this whole thing away. Blindly cutting away 29 millimeters will remove the entire thing we added. We're not going to do 19 plus 10. We're going to just do 19 and leave 10. Let's take away 19. Enter. Okay, our part is done. Let's take a look at it, spin it around, look at it. The next video will be how to create the drawing for it, what dimensions to call out, what's necessary. Eventually, coming up very soon, you're going to be handed a print, a physical engineering drawing, and you're going to be expected to interpret it the way that I'm doing. Until then, have a good day.